Okay. So the first one, I'm just going to start by factoring everything. I'll pause so in case you um, aren't done, but you can just check. So factor everything, like the difference of squares and a common factor. Nothing can be factored on the right. Okay. Taking a look at that though, if we look at the first denominator on the left-hand side, that's our most common denominator because x plus 1 is a factor and x is a factor. So our lowest common denominator is x times x plus 1. Okay. So now you decide if you are going to show it with that denominator or you're just going to go straight ahead and multiply through by the lowest common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to go through and multiply by the lowest common denominator. Okay. And so when I do that, I'm left with x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now in this case, if you hadn't factored that numerator, it actually is fine because it doesn't divide out anyway. So you could go back to, or to x squared minus 4 if you wanted to. But then here, when I distribute this, just the x plus 1s divide out. So I've got x times x plus 4. And minus, and just the x's divide out. So I need brackets around x minus 7 times x plus 1. Okay. So from there, I'm going to expand out. If you had kept the denominators, then you would have all of this over x times x plus 1. Okay, all of this over x times x plus 1. Okay, so when I expand everything out, I'm going to keep brackets around these binomial squares, my result from that, because it's subtracting. So that's going to be x squared minus 6x minus 7. And I didn't I can get rid of the brackets there. So then when I get rid of these brackets, it changes. So this was a positive inside, so it's a subtraction. Uh, it looks the same, but really that was a positive. Okay, these have to change. So that was a subtraction. Now it's an adding. Same with adding stuff. Okay, then collect like terms. So I'm going to, on the right hand side first, is what I'm going to do. So x squared go to 0. I get 10x plus 7. And then it's a quadratic. I've got an x squared term. So I want to get everything on one side, 0 on the other. And I like to have the x squared term being positive. So I'm going to keep that there. Bring over the 10x. Bring over the 7, which is subtract 7. Okay, so I get that quadratic. Okay, so I'm going to factor this. Does factor. You get two solutions, negative 1 and positive 11. Okay, when I look back at my factored form, of my denominators, my restrictions are 0 and negative 1. Well, you'll notice that this is a restriction, so I have to eliminate it. That is extraneous. Okay. And so then I'd like to have a final statement. Don't just leave it like that, where I put in what the solution is. So, when we're going to do the applications that are coming up, we're going to get equations. Maybe not quite as, as much work to do with these, but we're going to get rational equations that we have to solve um, in order to be able to answer the application questions. Okay, so the continuation really from yesterday. There are one or two that you could actually do without rational rationals, but um, they, they, they try to 
on both legs. Okay, so let's look at the first application question. So there's sort of some common ones. There's what we are called a number type question. So some relationship between two different numbers is given to you. And you have to solve an equation. There's distance, speed, and time. Um, so you use that formula B equals ST to help you out or divide if you're looking for it, S or T. Uh, there's some money questions. Um, there's perimeter area. There's sort of kind of common themes, but you'll see some similar ones in the homework as well. So the first one is a number type of question. And we kind of set it out in steps for you, where uh, it might be helpful to use these steps for any type of question. So uh, first thing with the application is you want to define your variable. Maybe only one, might be more than one. Um, in this case, what the, the question says, the sum of two numbers is 16, and the difference of the reciprocals is 1 over 15. Determine the value of the numbers. Okay, so in this case, uh, we're going to end up solving something in one variable, but let's go use two. You don't know, you need to find out two different numbers. So let x be one number, and y be another number. So there's kind of a hint in the next thing. Because writing the equation for the variables you are determining, you may have to do some extra work to get the equation in terms of one variable. That's two, right? X and Y. So oftentimes there's two parts to it. So this, the sum of two numbers is 16. That's one equation. Sum means add, is means equals. Okay, so x plus y equals 16 is one of your equations. Okay, then the other one, difference of the reciprocals, so is means equals, difference means subtract, reciprocals 1 over, right? So 1 over x, 1 over y, the difference is 1 over 15. So we've got two equations in two unknowns. We're going to spend a whole unit on systems of equations at the end of this course. It's part of Math 10. Uh, and so this is a system. So that means we have more than one equation and more than one variable. But really what we're, we're doing here is we need to solve for x and y. Can't do that right now because there's two variables, right? But we do know the relationship. If two numbers add to 16, then that means, for example, y is 16 minus x. Right? The total is 16, so one of them is equal to the total minus the other one. It doesn't matter what variable you use. So we can substitute that into that denominator. Okay? So now our equation is really 1 over x minus 1 over 16 minus x. Okay, so that's the equation we're going to solve. And now that we know how to solve rational equations, we can do that. So step three is to solve it. So nothing can be factored. So my lowest common denominator has to have a, have a factor of x, has to have a factor of 16 minus x, has to have a factor of 15. Okay. So it's really 15 x bracket 16 minus x. If you want it, you could factor out a negative 1 here. And that would be x minus 16, okay? 
it would be a negative, so then you'd be subtracting the negative with the add. Okay? I wouldn't bother in this case. This is something similar on that little practice last week, right? You needed to factor out the negative so that you didn't repeat a factor. But here, there's nothing that's even close to 16 minus x. So there's no, not, no need to, to do that. You can just keep that as your lowest common denominator. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply through just to save space, although there is a fair bit of space. I'm going to use this here and just show my starting work and then I'll go down here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 15x times 16 minus x. Then that means I'm multiplying each term on the left. And then my next line is going to be down here. So when I multiply the first term, just the x's divide out. So I'm left with 15 times 16 minus x times 1, if you don't even have to show the 1, then minus, and here the 16 minus x is divided out, so it's 15x times, so it's minus 1 times 15x, again, you don't have to show the 1, equals, and then here the 15 divides out, so 1 times x is x times 16 minus x. Okay. So by multiplying each side by the same factor, you get rid of the denominator. Now expand everything. Okay, and it's like like term. Okay, so 240 minus 15x minus 15x equals 16x minus x squared. Two forty minus thirty x, and you can see it's quadratic. So get everything to one side. Okay. Now this is a negative x squared, so I'm actually going to bring everything to the left, make it positive. If you bring everything to the right, then just be aware you've got a negative x squared. So I rearrange that and maybe divide out or factor out a negative. In this case, if I bring everything to the left and put it in descending order of degree, then I'm going to have maybe a 46x, just bring in 40, and 0. Okay. okay, so you want two numbers that multiply to 240 and add to negative 46. So if you think of 24, it's 4 times 6, right? So what, is, what would the factors be? Yeah, negative 40 and negative 6. So this would be x minus 40 times x minus 6. So your solutions are 6 and 40. Your non-permissibles were 0 and 16. Okay? So you don't have to eliminate anything from your set, but you're not done yet. So the biggest thing with the application is think about what you're asked. You're asked for the two numbers. You got two numbers, but those are both x values. In your original definition, you have x and y, okay, that add to 16. So in this case, you're going to get two pairs of numbers. When x is 6, so here, when x is 6, then y is 16 minus 6, which is 10. And 
and then x is 40, y is 16 minus 40, which is what? Negative 24. Okay. You can have to add the 16. So there's two pairs. Sometimes we might say um, find the pairs of positive numbers, for example, and then so you would actually have to eliminate this from your, your solution set because part of it is not a, a positive, the y value. Okay? But in this case, it just has uh, two numbers. So it would be whatever two numbers. Okay? So, sentence four. The two pairs of numbers are six and ten and forty and negative twenty-four. So because there's words in the question, it's an application question, then we have words at the end. Okay? We summarize it in the statement. So this is a six here. It, it, it's not that one. Yep. I know. Because you already checked them. Okay, so this is these numbers work, and that's your statement. Okay. Okay, so turn to the next one. This one's a, you can really do this one in two different ways. One would have rationals and one would not. So you may actually end up thinking about it um, in the method that doesn't use rational. So we'll do it that way to start and then we'll show you how rationals work. So uh, 36 students of Mrs. Tong's math 10 ID. So Mrs. Tong used to work here, she's retired now. Uh, contributing an equal amount to buy her fabulous gift for her retirement. Um, however, six students got mad at her for taking away their cell phones. Um, okay. uh, she probably did take them away. And refused to contribute to her gift. As a result, the remaining 30 students had to con contribute more, right, to pay for that same. Price item. Uh, determine the value of her gift. Okay. So when I think about this, um, we don't know the value of her gift, right? So you could say let um, D the value of her gift. So again, two variables, and let X be the cost per student. Okay. I'm kind of going to do this in two ways. All right, because when I think about it, I actually think about it this way. Um, to use rational equations, you try to think about it a little bit differently. Yeah. So, uh, value of a gift. So, originally, the value that x is the cost per student for if the whole class contributes. Okay? So the value would be 36 per student times that x. Okay? That x is no matter how many students, that's what they're going to pay. But now the value of her gift has to be the same. It's not going to change. But we're adding $1 to the amount that each student contributes, where no six people say no, they don't want to. Okay? So these have to be equal to each other. Okay, so the value of the gift multiplied by 36, or sorry, the cost per person multiplied by 36 is the total value. Fewer people, so this has to go up. And you're told it goes up by one. So therefore, 
36x has to equal 30 times x plus 1. Okay, and then solve that. Okay. So no non permissibles, this is not a rational equation. So we get x equals 5. What does it ask you in the question? It says determine the value of the time here. X is the cost per student. So if you put this back in, you can get the value of the gift. Okay, so uh, therefore, V equals 36 times 5, or 30 times 5 plus 1, and that's going to be 180. So, therefore, the value of this is times is $180. Okay. Now, if um, if we were to think about using rational, and I only have one variable. Okay. So we know. So the number of students. Sometimes we do a chart to help us, and um, the do V. Yeah, let's do V for the price. Um, v is the price of gift. Okay. I'm going to run out of space a little bit here. I'm just going to move this a teeny bit. And then uh, cost per student. So if we have 36, okay, let's use V, price of the gift, V, then the cost per student would be V, uh, sorry, would be, um, yeah, V over 36, okay, that's before she took the cell phones away, right? Okay. Then she takes the cell phones away, and 30 students, the value of the gift doesn't change. Uh, this cost per student would be V over 30, right? If we um, just knew what V was, we just divide it by 30. But what we're told is that this would be the same as this plus 1, right? So it says, as a result, the remaining 30 students had to contribute an extra dollar, which they are happy to do. So this amount here is one dollar more than this. Okay, what they would have paid if everyone contributed. So that's where we get our equation. So v over thirty six plus one equals v over thirty. Okay. Now it's a rational equation. Okay. There's no uh, variables in the denominator. But you would still solve it the same way by multiplying through by the lowest common denominator. So what number does uh, 36 uh, 30 go into? Um, you could do 360. You could do lower than that, right? 180. Um, 180. Right? Because um, 100, so here, if you multiply through by 180, That goes five times, so five V, that's 180 equals V. Yes, I'm going to just do that. Yeah, yeah. That equals V equals 60. Okay, so for V, V, 
and we get v equals 180. Okay. So this method gets you the answer right away because you're actually solving for the value of the gift. This one we actually got had to solve for the, the price that each student would pay and then calculate the value of the gift. Okay, so two different methods. Okay, so this says the speed of a plane is seven times as great as the speed of a car. A car takes three hours longer than the plane to travel 315 kilometers. Determine the speed of the car and the speed of the plane. So, as I mentioned, a really common type of uh, question is distance, speed, and time. So, I like to do a little chart. I'm okay if you don't have a let x t. If you don't have a chart, then you need let x be the speed of the car. There aren't any other variables, so you just want, right? So in that column here that we had to use our d equals t, now we have to relate 
those to each other. Okay? So I'm just going to write them down like this. Okay? If it said it took the same amount of time to travel, then you put an equal sign in between. So if the car takes three hours longer than the plane. So this is the plane's time. This is the car's time. The car took three hours longer than the plane. So this is where students get mixed up. They think, oh, I'm going to add three to the car's time. Think about, that doesn't make sense. The plane goes way faster. So it, this time for the plane is small compared to this. So you can either add three to the plane, okay, or you could take the plane and subtract three from the car. Okay. Either one. And you can see now we just keep doing that over. These are in hours. Okay, as long as this is in kilometers and uh if this is in kilometers and this doesn't matter, we can do it in meters or whatever, but for a plane and a car. It's going to be in uh, hours, okay? Especially since it tells you three hours there. If you did minutes here, you'd have to change this, okay? So this is all in hours. Notice that seven actually goes into three hundred and fifteen. It goes in what forty-seven times? That's not good. Forty-five times, sorry. Okay. You decide how you want to solve that. You can actually get the x term to the left if you wanted to. Then multiply three by x because it multiplies three by x now. That's usually what I do. So determine the speed of the car and the speed of the plane. Well, x would be the speed of the car, and then you substitute it back in. So this is car and speed of the plane would be 7x. So we can then do a secret, therefore, the speed of the car and these units is 90 kilometers per hour. And the speed of the plane is 630 kilometers per hour. Okay, then take a look at question five. This also um, gives you speed of time. Okay, it's measured in miles and hours. Okay, so if the units are different, I would do a part as well.
two new plans to run a 12.2 mile course in two hours. For the first 8.4 miles, she plans to run at a slower pace, then speed up for the rest. So again, it's split up into two parts, the slow part and a fast part. So this I'm going to put slow, this I'm going to put fast. So then, um, the total distance is 12.2. So sometimes I put underneath, like I just kind of think, okay, these are my totals if they give it to me. So that's 12.2. Total times 2. Not that I'm going to use them in, uh, well, I'm maybe using them in the equation, um, but I just put them in there just to organize my, my information. So the first, uh, the slower part, is 8.4 miles. So 8.4 can go there. And that must mean that the fast part is 12.2 minus 8.4. Right? So 12.2 minus 8.4 is 3.8. Okay, she plans to speed up by two miles per hour for the rest of the course. So when you speed up by a certain amount, that's like adding it on. If, I, if I'm driving, and you don't have your license yet, but if you're in a vehicle, and, well, I know when I'm driving, my husband often tells me to speed up. So he'll say, speed up by 10 kilometers per hour. That doesn't mean I multiply by 10. That would be crazy, right? I increase by 10. So I add to that. So uh, so if this is her speed looking for it slowly, then we're going to add 2 to that. Okay. I filled in two columns. Now I can fill in the third. Remember time is distance divided by speed. So it's going to be 8.4 over x and 3.8 over x plus 2. Okay. So we need to use this third column, whichever, doesn't have to be here, but often it is. We're going to use the column that we filled in, whichever column that is, to come up with an equation. So think about the times. The time that she spent running slowly, plus the time that she kept uh, ran fast, has to equal the total time that she ran that distance. So this is actually just going to be a plus in between, and equals 2, based on that information. So the equation, I'm going to go back and just put my let statement, let x be her speed, her slowest speed, sorry. Okay, so 8.4 over x plus 3.8 over x plus 2 equals 2. And you can tell lowest common denominator is x times x plus 2. So both sides. Actions divide out, so it's 8.4 times x plus 2, plus x plus 2 is divide out, so 3.8x. If you want to expand at the same time in that step, you can. Or you can expand in the next step. Okay. 
cut like terms, you'll see it's a quadratic, so you will have to get um, all the terms to one side. And the, the, um, the square term is on the right somehow, so we're going to get everything to the right here. And then you can switch it around if you want. But, um, okay, so this is going to be, put that uh, 9.2, so 12.2x. Now, there are decimals. It's hard to factor when there are decimals. Okay? So, a couple things we can do. We, can, we could solve by graphing. Okay? But let's see if we can solve it algebraically. So, my hint is multiply everything through by 10 to get rid of the decimal. Okay? But every, in an equation, as long as you treat each side equally, then you haven't changed any values. Okay. Now we have really big numbers. Okay. So maybe can we divide by, well, we certainly can divide by 2. Can we divide by 4? No. So let's divide by 2. In terms of those, 840. Okay, so if we divide by 2, it's it's too big a difference between them, right? So let's get down to, let's say, 840 divided by 10. Okay, so that's 10 and 84. So if you have 84 negative, it would be negative 74. So we want to go divide by something bigger. So 10 does uh, 12 go into the, no, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 12 and 70. 48, we're getting closer. So 840, 15, uh, and 56. Yay! Okay. So 15 times negative 50. Oh no, 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 no. Uh-uh. Oh, what did I do wrong here? To be negative. Yeah. Okay. So now I've got it. Oh. Okay. Uh, here. So this would be a negative, but I got my factors right. Oh, oh my lord. Uh, divided by two, so 41. Okay, so I want that to be negative 840, and now these work, right? Okay. So, we either use decomposition or trial and error. And, but you have to think about here, right? This is 10x squared. So, if I put 10x here, I have to have x here. That's not going to work for me. Because those two numbers, I have to get from multiplying the outside and the inside. So, the only other choice is a 5 and a 2. 
And then that makes sense. 5x times 3 gives me 15x. And 2x times negative 28 gives me negative 54. Okay. So then my solutions, 28 over 5 or negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2 makes sense. No. No. Can't have a negative C. So it satisfies the equation. Okay. You don't call it extraneous. Uh, because we should actually have forgot to check our, our restrictions, but our restrictions don't come into play. Okay. So that's why we don't call this extraneous. What we call it is inadmissible. It satisfies it, but it doesn't make sense for this application. So this we call inadmissible. And I'm not a good seller, but I think it's both eyes in that. So uh, inadmissible. So now this is the speed. Because the original question was in decimal, you can give your answer in decimal. So um, I'll do it in my statement. And really, it only asks for the slower pace speed. So you don't actually have to give both. So uh, Susan's slower pace speed was, and 28 over 5 is 5.6, and this is miles per hour. So miles per no, think about it like um speed limit is like initially like forty miles per hour. Forty five in the So that's her on the car, right? Yeah. 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 He's training though, right? But so a marathon is twenty two point six miles. And a lot of people just put in about five hours. So, okay, so 